Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 and today I'm going to be giving you part 19 of what if Naruto had the deadliest bloodline. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode, well brand new series to be exact, of what if Naruto got his powers from a dying god over an Anime King 2. Enjoy that guys, and also over Anime King, I post a brand new episode of what if Naruto went insane with a bloodline, so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And also, on this channel I post a brand new episode of what if Naruto went to a different multiverse, so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And remember for anyone this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, with the last part we left off, Naruto felt woozy after killing Kisame as he calmly walked towards where Sasuke was unconscious and Itachi was dead as he calmly made his way over there. Upon arriving, he saw the unconscious Sasuke as he was about to pick him up, but before he could, the masked man appeared. As he attacked Naruto as he was trying to capture him and Sasuke, but Naruto fought back despite his blaring weakness. Something was wrong with him, Naruto fought back as he fought. The masked man was surprised as he saw Naruto's skills. His power was just the same as Natsu. The both of them clashed against each other rather violently. The masked man used his ability to face through Naruto attacks but Naruto did something that shocked him as Naruto started to move instantaneously and he started to be viciously hit. As the masked man was confused until Naruto created a concentrated blast of chakra mixed with his blood to turn red as Naruto incinerated the entire place. The masked man fled as he felt more Kanoha ninjas coming. It was then that Jiren and the others caught up to him as Sakura saw Naruto. As she saw him once again and this time she would not let him go that easily as she walked up towards him. Jiren and the others gave her a chance as Naruto let down Sasuke. As Kakashi realized that Naruto was allowing them to take Sasuke, did this mean that they were coming back? Given that he saw the dead body of Itachi over there, he knew that the battle was over between the brothers and Sasuke had won. As Jiraiya had picked up Sasuke, the group was confused. Sasuke didn't look like he was going to come back as Sakura finally confessed her feelings to Naruto as she told him that she loved him. As she wanted him back, she wanted him to come back with her as she begged with him. She even moved to kiss him, which she did, but Naruto stepped back as he seemed to be fighting with himself. He then took off after he summoned his bat. She cried out his name but he was already gone. He had apologized to her before he had left. He was going through a lot, he was suffering and she would not let him suffer by himself. She would find him no matter what. But for now they could not. As Jare decided to continue to search though as the group head back to Kanoha. So with that, Sasuke was brought back to the village and not to mention they phoned Karen as well. Karen came back as she told Snaddy everything as Snaddy got the vial of blood. So, he has gone too far, she thought to herself. As she remembered what Naruto told her that if he couldn't control himself, he wanted her to find a way to kill him. She never wanted to do it. But he told her that if he snapped and lost control, he could not be stopped as he was getting too powerful too fast. So he pleaded with her. So that is exactly what she did. When the masked man finally returned back, as he asked for Natsu, but the man was already gone. As Natsu had felt something, as he believed that it was Naruto, 
as Naruto was changing to something different that not even he could understand or explain. It took him a while to find Naruto on top of a mountain top close to the border of Kumo as Naruto was just lying there. As he finally arrived as the boat then spoke, as Natsu had explained why he became like this, because he believed that this was the final fight between them. As he had killed someone precious to him, he had ripped her throat out when he lost control and he realized that life was meaningless. That was when the masked man showed up, as he told him that he could get everything that he wanted in an everlasting dream. Having nothing more to live for, Natsu decided to give himself over to the masked man and work for him so that he could accomplish his dream. As Naruto got up, as one of them were going to kill each other here, this was all that Naruto wanted after all. He still remember being drowned in that water and that stuck with him for life. And he was going to make sure he brought Natsu down, no matter what it takes. As the both of them started to fight, it started out small until it became catalysmic. They started to rip and tear the air to pieces. Even far off in Kumo, tremors could be felt. The Raikage wonder what the hell was going on. This was not natural, this was unnatural. As Natsu and Naruto kept on duking it out like two godly beings shaking their surrounding area. So yeah guys, so basically that's what left off you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So we'll just begin this new episode. We begin this episode within Konoha. As Sasuke slowly opened his eyes. He had to close them right away because of the bright light that was coming from the window when he shifted. As it took him a moment to reopen his eyes as he heard a clinging sound. Someone was looking over a chart as the person placed it down as he saw the pink here. S Sakura, he said, his voice coming out dry. Sakura turned towards him her gaze, didn't seem happy at all as she looked down at the bandit Sasuke. He tried to get up but she rested her hand on his chest, forced him to lie back down. You're too weak, just stay where you are, she said as she got a few more pillows and packed it behind him for him to rest up even more so he can see her fully. As she was angry at him, he could see that very clearly. How long did you know? He was confused by her question, not expecting her to ask him that. How long did I know what? he asked. How long did you know that something was wrong with Naruto? she asked. As he lowered his head, he had started to figure out something from the tune exams when he saw Naruto fighting and losing himself and he put it together. By the time the end of tune exams he figured out that Naruto was struggling with something but he kept it to himself from the tune exams. Sakura pulled her hand back but it stopped right at Sasuke's face as her hand was shaking as it was curling to a fist. Sasuke looked towards a fist that almost slammed into his face. He was injured so if that had hit him, it would have been trouble. As her hand was shaking furiously. You're lucky you're injured, she said. As she thought the same thing that he was thinking at the moment. As she gritted her teeth in anger. You knew that long, yet you said nothing to help him. I thought he was your best friend. She said her voice calm. He is my best friend, said Sasuke. Then why did you allow him to suffer? As she was furious, he could see it in her eyes. She lowered her head, as all of that anger seemed to drain away. At first, I acted like this fangirl, always crushing on you. Never noticing him at all. He was like a purse in the background. Until we became friends. When me and my parents got into a few hassle, he was there, sneaking at my window, telling me to come out. And I did, and we went and had fun around the village. We tried to find you several times, but you were always off training, so it was just him and I. I think I knew from then that I felt something for him, but I never acted on it. I just did not, I thought we were just friends. I guess I was too late, as she dropped her hands to her side. And now, 
I don't know what to do. So scaling his head back. A part of me knew that he would do something like this. As she looked towards him. He's always doing this. Looking out for everyone except himself. Trying to save everyone except himself. I tried. Said Sasuke. Trust me, I really tried. I tried to understand. I tried to make him see reason, but I failed. As close as I was to him, I couldn't help. Every day, it got worse and worse until the point where he couldn't take it anymore. And that is when I knew that I was slowly losing my friend. Now after killing my brother and everything, I realize I feel I don't I don't feel satisfied, even after getting my revenge, a part of me still feel empty. You know, he told me something a long time ago, which I'm realizing now is the truth. Without people around you, family, friends, you have nothing, and he's right. And I threw that all away for revenge. I'm sorry, said Sasuke. Soccer release a long breath. You can make up for it by helping me get him back. You've been with him this entire time. You must know something to help me. Sasuke looked around. Where's my sword, he said. Your sword? Yeah, the sword I was fighting Itachi with. Oh, said Sakura as she left for a moment. She came back a moment later with a blade. She did. Sasuke pointed towards the handle. There's a seal on it. Release what is inside. Sakura did as she was told as it was a bottle that came out. What's this? The pills. The pills that Urchimar used to sustain Ruta all this time. I believe that you're something that Sinedi can do to change them into helping him fully. You you mean sh you, Sakura was stuttering as her hand shaking. You mean Urchimar found a way to sustain his bloodlust? As hope started to rise in her heart. Yeah, for a short amount of time though. A delightful smile came on her face. I'm sure that me and Snell Sama can find out something to change these pills. Didn't he find a way to make it permanent? No, unfortunately not. But I don't believe him, said Sasuke. He would have said anything to keep Naruto under his control. Well, I guess we'll have to try then, she said. I'll speak late, Snaddy. I'll be back soon, she said as she rushed out of the room. As she just rushed away, as Sasuke watched her leave, he was right. She loved him. And he knew that Naruto cared about her as well, despite his little fling with a wife that meant nothing to him. But he just needed to understand. As Sasuke looked down, he was not even cuffed to the bed or anything. Oh, now he understood why as he looked down towards his chest. There was a seal on his chest. As he could not feel most of his chakra. He had a civilian amount of chakra. <laughs> well, there was no point of this because he wouldn't be run away. Only thing he wanted now was for Naruto to return back to the village. As he had asked Naruto for so much, he asked him for his help. And he indeed helped him. Itachi was now dead. It's time that he started to help him as well. The door then opened. Sasuke kun? As Sasuke looked towards the door to see Karen. Karen, he said. You're here. Yeah. A long story, she said to him. Are you okay? I've been better, he told her. Meanwhile, Snelly was not at the office, so she went to the hospital. As she was told that Snelly entered a few minutes ago along with his wing. When Sakura arrived at the medical bay, the both of them were in a private room. As Sakura knocked, they stopped talking. Come in, said Snelly. As Sakura stepped inside, Lady Snelly, I think we have a way of saving Ruto. What? Said Shizune and Snelly. As she lifted the bottle of pills. Meanwhile, the coastline of Kumo, out in the higher mountains. Several mountains were there, which were large and prominent. They were far, 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 far up. It would take weeks, probably months, to scale them. For even ninjas, given how far the mountains were, the given the fact that Kumo pushed past the clouds in the Raikage's tower, and the mountain skyscrape 
his tower. That was how large they were. And it wasn't an easy job as well. Going up there the pressure became so heavy. And the air became so thin you could barely breathe. The mountains were dangerous. But as of this very moment, several of those mountains were flat. The area was decimated. Splashes of puddles of water was around. A massive, gigantic lake of water that was red like blood. Burn marks on the ground. Upturned earth. The place was a disaster. As two persons stood there. Neither of them wearing a shirt. But there was not a single cut on their body. But their body was stained in blood though. Their pants looked similar black pants. Not so mass was shattered a long time ago. As his red hair hung down to his face. Naruto blonde white spiky hair was spreading like a mess, some of it sticking to his face because of the sweat. As they didn't have any weapons, just their fists. The both of them are running low on chakra, as Naruto had a seal over the seal on his stomach. This was Natsu's doing, a temporary seal to cut out the power of the Kyube. As Naruto had no time to remove it, Natsu was being overwhelmed by Naruto's power and the Kyubis together, so he had managed to place a seal on Naruto, and he wouldn't give Naruto a chance to take it off, but despite that, Natsu was surprised, shocked, shaken even, to learn how much Naruto has grown, because even without the power of the Kyube, Naruto was kicking his ass. Despite them not showing their cuts because of their rapid healing ability from their bloodline, their bodies were weakened. Of all the constant fists, jutsus, and removal of body parts, they were exhausted. But they still were on their feet. As Naruto slammed his hand into Natsu's throat, as Natsu gripped his throat, barely able to breath, moving forward, Naruto grabbed the side of his face and used his big fingers to pluck into the man's eyes as he squeezed. Natsu cried out in pain before. He pushed Naruto away as he headbutt Naruto hard, causing his skull to burst. He then kicked Naruto in the chest as Naruto reached out and grabbed onto his arm though as the both of them fell. Face first as he fell off the small hill that they were on. As Naruto fist came down and slammed into Natsu's face as his eyes were regenerating. As Natsu crashed his fist in Naruto's chin, both men had been at it rather heavily and their chakra was coming down. As they used up so much of their blood, they were getting woozy. But they would not give up. They seemed to be a perfect match for each other. As the both of them lie there, the rain started to pour down on them. It started to shower the area. As neither man moved. Several deep breaths were taken. As they just looked up at the sky. It seems that we can't die, said Natsu. As he shook his head in disappointment. I thought I could at least kill you to spare you from this burden. Huh. You just want to be the only one, said Naruto. Yes. Isn't a good thing, Natsu said. But why? I thought you said you didn't care about anyone anymore. So why help me? Why spare me? Well, perhaps it's because... I... know what you're going through. But even as we beat and pummel each other, we're not getting anywhere. So why don't you help me, Natsu said. Help you, said Naruto. I told you what the masked man wants. He wants to bring forth a world of perfect, perfect syncrasy, perfect calm, no deaths, no suffering, a world where you can be with the ones that you love. Don't you want that? Everyone want that. So why don't you just help me, Natsu said. You're the only person I've been able to say this to, but I'm sick of fighting you. It's just tiresome. I've been able to butcher everyone else in my past. I've even ripped Urchimaru apart several times, to the point where he fears me. I'm sure the same effect happened to him when he saw your eyes. He tried to take over my body. So I burned him, I maimed him. I made him suffer, but you, you're just like me. And we're just so goddamn powerful. And I'm tired of that. 
So help me change this world. Help me bring forth a new world of perfect dreams. A world where we can live together in perfect harmony. Screw you, said Naruto. What, said Natsu? I might want that, said Naruto. But there are some people out there that I do not want to rob them of their freedom. But you will be happy. But what about my friends? They will be happy as well. In a fake world, there are certain people out there that has a chance of living in this real world. Yes, it's hard, but it is real. Real love. Real affection. The way you speak about that. Do you have someone you love, said Natsu. As Nur did not answer him. Well, I'll find out who it is. And I'll kill her, said Natsu. As Naruto glared at the man. Yeah, you heard me. I'll kill her and then I'll go to Kanoha. Well, she's probably there. And I'll kill Sasuke. I'll kill everyone that you come to care about. To make you understand that there is no hope. There is nothing left in this world but sadness. As Natsu heard Naruto stop talking. As he felt a sensation as he turned to see Naruto. Removing the seal that he placed on him. No! As he reached out to grab Naruto's hand until... Something happened as the both of them were yanked into his mindscape. Their bodies were still there but their mind was taken away. Not so falling himself on his knees. As he saw Naruto slowly getting up, he moved as he slammed his fist in Naruto's face, knocking him onto the ground. As the both of them fell, he got back up before chains shot out and grabbed onto him as he pulled him down to the ground. Do not touch my son! A voice angrily said towards him. As Naruto looked over as he saw a woman, beautiful red hair, as she had this most pleasant smile, a man appeared behind her. He looked around confused. This is not right, he said. As he then looked over, Naruto? As the woman turned, Minato, you're here too? It's him. She said, it's our baby, as she had tears in her eyes. As Minato looked towards his son, mother, father, said Naruto. As he tried to get up to his feet, but before he could, there was this rush. Minato and Kushina turned as they were consumed by it. A rush of, he didn't know what exactly as he slammed into both him and Minato as well. The next thing they knew, they found themselves in a strange, desolate area. Both him and Natsu were sitting down. As much as they tried to get up, they could not. What is this? What are you doing? said Natsu. I don't know what the hell is going on, said Naruto. Alright, that's enough bakery. As Naruto was looking forward as he saw a man, a silhouette of a man walked towards them. The man looked at the two of them with a smile. I am sorry young ones, he said. As he sat down across from them. Who the hell are you, said Natsu. The man had purple eyes and red hair. Now is that any way to talk to your founding father? The man said with a smile. As Natsu narrowed his eyes at the man. Founding father? Well, one of them to be exact, the man said. You're an Uzumaki, said Naruto. Yes, you catch on quick, young Naruto, he said. Wait, what's going on, said Natsu. That, my boy, I will explain. Firstly, I would like to apologize to you both. For what, said Naruto? Where are my parents? Oh, the imprint. I apologize, but I had to use their chakra to speak to you both. You what? It's better this way, young Naruto. They don't have the answers that you seek. I apologize what I must do, but you must understand. What is happening? What? And why did you gain these bloodlines? Wait, you know, said Natsu. Were you a holder as well? Not just a holder. I started this. Both of their gaze snapped towards him. You what? Yes. I was the one that started this, and the reason why you have this power. Not so struggle against his binds 
as he wanted to rip the man apart. But he could not move. Despite there being nothing holding on to him. You bastard. You ruined my life. You did all of this. Come here and let me kill you. Come and know that you deserve it. Yes. I do, but it wouldn't change anything. I'm just a passerby. You're dead, said Naruto, as he was more calm than Natsu. Not exactly. I am still somewhat alive. What, said Naruto? My body is buried hundreds, thousands of miles under the earth. Thanks to the Uzumaki and their Fuinjutsu. It's because of my actions they had to be buried away. But I will never be awakened for real. Because if I am, I'm afraid I will start Armageddon on this world. I'm much worse than you too. Much twisted and corrupted. As you see me now is myself cleansed of all the bad thoughts, all the bloodlust. As not so scoff, get on with it. I can't kill you, so what's the point? What the hell do you want? I came here to explain what exactly I did. Firstly, my name is Simsara Uzumaki. The man started to salute the unbutton his shirt. As he opened his shirt to see a mass. The mass looked like one of the Shinigami masks in the Uzu temple. This was created by me and several others. I was the one that bring forward the jutsu that is known as a reaper dead seal. But I wanted to create something more powerful. You see this all began in the clan's era war. The Uzumakis were being overrun. We weren't allied with the Senjos yet so we were being overrun by the other nations. Things weren't looking so Good. Hoshirama Senju and Madara Uchiha were mere childs at that point. While the Uzumakis were friends with the Senjus, they were not complete allies. That did not happen until the marriage between Hoshirama and Mito Uzumaki. That is where the arrangement fully consummated. But while we were friends because of our background lineage that is said to be from the Sage, it was hard in those times for us to risk our life to save one another. And not to mention the Uzumaki's most to stay by themselves. So in doing so we isolated ourselves to the wrath of the other clans that were out there. I was one of the few that did not want things to be like this so I created several things. I and a few others with a mass. I was the one that was able to firstly create the mass to contact the Shinigami. It took a lot of dead Uzumaki to create that mess. But it was pointless seeing that it took your soul so I wanted something more powerful. I wanted something more deadly. So I started to work on something else. The dead man mass. Which is what you see in my chest. With a combination of my own blood. And a lot of hard work. I was able to create something. Different. But at the time I did not know what I did. I had dived into the world of the dead you see. And I had taken something that did not belong to me. Something that wasn't supposed to be in the mortal plane. That I accidentally trapped away in that mass. So much food into the seals it was able to hold back that thing whatever it was. I had tried to destroy the mass after I realized. What it is. What are you talking about said Naruto. Some sort of demon. Something I cannot explain. It was evil. Wicked. I thought it was going to be the answer to our prayers. I had spoken to the thing. It's hard to describe. It's a body of mass and power. Like a tail beast. It promised me that once I release it. It would help protect the Uzumakis. All it wanted was to be friends. I was cautious about this but I... I needed something, I need to protect my family. So I gave in. With my blood and a seal, I released it. At first, it did help us. Fending off all the attackers until it wanted more. 
it wanted more blood and it started a feast until it started to turn towards the Uzumakis. That is when I realized my dreadful mistake. We fought it, it slaughtered many of us. But in the end we were able to bring it down with sealing arts. But after being released it could not be stopped. So I proposed something dangerous. I attach it to my own life force to buy it some time. And I place it in my own self. Upon doing so it changed me. It gave me abilities that I never thought that was possible. More strength, speed, reflex. I can hear so far, I can smell everything. I can literally hear my wife heart beat. At first everything was normal. I spent time with my wife and for a year nothing happened while we were still trying to find out how to stop it. And then my wife got pregnant. After that I start to wake up in strange places. Until one morning, after a while I woke up with my wife, blood on my hands, my daughter crying, and I realized that I had ripped her apart, well not exactly me. When I had looked in the mirror I saw it, that face looking back at me, it was the dead man mass, he laughed at me, he mocked me, saying that he was taking over. I tried everything but no matter what I did I could not remove it from myself. But I could not, because if I did it would wreak havoc on the world, and it would be all my fault. So with that dreadful heart, knowing that I will never get to see my daughter grow up, I ordered it was Maki's great apolta seal, to keep me sustained, to keep me alive. Even though my body might age, my heart, to keep it beating with chakra, to use the nature around, the energy of the earth itself. But the mass overheard this all. It didn't want to be killed. So it did something unforgivable. While I was saying goodbye to my daughter, at the time I did not know, it transported some of itself into my own daughter. Where it lay dormant until it was passed down. It seems like you two are closer than you think. Said Simsara, as he looked at the two, you two share the same blood. Not just as Uzumakis, but as distant families, connected by your mother, Nurtakan. As Nurta listened to the man's story, after I was buried, after I was going to be sealed away, while I was in the earth, trapped in a mindscape of sorts with a monster, it told me that it transports some of itself into my daughter. But I was already sealed and never to be awoken ever again. And just like that, I watched it. Because I was connected to it, I watched it use my daughter as a host. It lied dormant until it was able to use its powers to reawaken the bloodline inside of others. It had only worked twice, and that is you too. But it was never able to fully reawaken its consciousness, which was what it wanted all this time. But I'm afraid it's happening again. What? You, Naruto. It's happening inside of you. I don't know how, but I feel its consciousness slipping away from me, even while I lie in my tomb. I can never get out for more than one reason. Over the centuries, it has been whispering dark thoughts in my mind for me to kill everyone. And I fear if I ever get out again, I will start to slaughter everyone around me. And if I do get out, its full consciousness will be brought upon this world. But I'm afraid I messed up. Its consciousness is somehow awakening inside of you. You are changing. And it is coming forth. What said Naruto? As he looked towards his hand as he remember what was happening to him before he fight the masked man. Yes, you know what's going on. It's trying to take over and take control of you. And if it does, this world itself is doomed. It will spread chaos and malice all around. It will drain almost everyone dry. The things are being made from nothing but darkness. Twisted chaos. Energy that I brought forth from the depths of the land beyond this world. And now I, I cannot stop it. 
So how do we... As nurses all look in the man's face. You don't know. I've tried. I came up with several theories in my mind. While I was sleeping. None of them worked. I don't know if there's a way. Because there is not. As Nurta looked down he heard that voice. What the hell? As Nurta saw two eyes on his chest. Finally. I'm able to manifest myself in here. The dead man mass said. It didn't have any mouth, but yet it spoke. As Natsu looked towards Naruto's chest, the thing laughed evilly. You know, kid, I have to thank you. Your malice, your pain growing up, your hatred, and not to mention your feelings being stifled, brought me forward. What said Naruto? You remember what your sensei Jiraiya told you once? He told you that you should not console your feelings like that and keep it all inside. Yet while growing up you kept your feelings to yourself. And it brought forward something dark. Which I was able to lash onto. And I could feel my consciousness slowly slipping. From you fool, he said looking towards him Sora. So once again I will be free. And I will plague this world. I will bring forward death and destruction. That is what you want, right? You made a contract with me to stop the evildoers by saving the Uzumaki clan. So that is what I'm here to do. Because all of them should die for what happened to the Uzumaki clan. They are wiped out because of you. Because you're an old naive fool. And I intend to fix that by exterminating everything. And everyone. All shall die. Naruto gripped his chest as he tried to tear it out. Simsara was shocked that Naruto was now freed. You will not take over me. It's already too late, kid. That girl was the last straw. As the thing laughed. You told her to give up on you. In doing so, you shatter your own heart. And not to mention now we're here. Once again, I have to say, thank you, Simsara. What? As Simsara's chest cracked open. As something flooded out of him. No! Naruto leave, he says he waved his hand as Naruto was pushed out of the space. But it was too late, a sliver of it went. Simsara snapped his head towards Natsu. As he moved forward as Natsu, felt himself able to stand. What's going on? He grabbed Natsu by the face. This is only for a limited time. I can share the power I have with you. You know that we get more powerful the longer we live for, right? Natsu nodded. So... I will give you everything I can. You need to stop him. Why? Why do I care if he destroys the world? Because if he does your dream of sleeping that eternal peace, yes I know of it, will never come true. You will forever remain on this planet without anyone. You will be alone. Empty, cast aside. You will have nothing. Is that what you really want? Everyone will die, trust me. It will not stop. Please, I'm asking you this. I messed up, I messed up big time, but I need your help. Not so narrowed his eyes to the man that was begging to him. How do I even stop this thing if I wanted to? There is a chance of slowing it down. You know, the 8th petrogram seal of the Uzumakis. I know that you do. Chop Naruto up into pieces. Remove his arms, his legs. Remove his head. That will not kill him, but seal all of his parts individually. In doing so, you need to go to Uzu, the ruins of Uzu, underneath the great shrine, there is a seal. A seal that I use to trap this monster. You will have to sacrifice Naruto by burying him underground, deep deep underground by sealing that seal over him, connecting to the nature of the earth and seal him away. I don't know how long it will last but let's just pray that your plan work. That you can get everyone in that Genjutsu, that false Genjutsu. So they can live a peaceful life while the world goes to hell. It's that bad, huh? Said Natsu. Worse, I'm afraid. What about you then? Said Natsu. Did he take his soul or whatever he tried to take from you? As the man looked down towards his chest. It's fading. More faster than before. I'm afraid while connecting myself to Naruto and you. 
he used a chance to connect himself to his real body where his mask is still away inside my chest because I'm still connected to him so you have to hurry if this completely fades away he will be back you have to hurry and stop him as Natsu found himself in the reward as he saw Naruto slowly got into his feet as Naruto's eyes were closed but the eyes on his chest were open huh. I never figured it to be this weak said Natsu letting this man take over your body you're pathetic the entity laugh huh. trust me he's fighting but I'm just too powerful for him to resist if it was you you'd have been long gone you want me to let you in a bit of secret? He's a lot stronger than you. Yes, this fight of his might come to a steel meet with you, but you should know something. I've tried to take over him before you came, and some of his energy, well, a lot of it was sapped away from him, resisting me. That is why you're able to keep up with him. Even after years of living, and he did not live as long as you, he still somehow got powerful than you. How? said Natsu. I thought our power worked by age. That's what you thought, didn't you? And he kind of does. But the thing is, he has something, while you have nothing. He had a goal striving for, and that goal helped him increase and increase and increase for him to become so powerful. This will be my perfect vessel for me to bring hell on this earth. What are you? said Natsu. <laughs> You know, the scary thing is, no one ever asked me that completely. I mean, Simsari did ask me, what is my purpose? Well, I kind of tricked him because I'm something that is, well, not for the faint of heart. And the Uzumakis were always too soft. At first, it was fun playing with them, but I got bored. So I decided to kill a few of them and then they turned against me. And yeah. That is where we find ourselves, but in truth, I'm like, well, to you mortals, you can say I'm not Ishinigami, but unlike him, I'm bound, because unlike him that brings soul and help them guide towards the afterlife in certain situations, I feed upon the suffering, I enjoy pain, chaos, and destructions. Did you think those masks the Uzumaki Shrine were created by you Uzumakis? Yes, the masks might be created by you and painted and all that. But the souls of the demons, well not really demons, you can call us gods in a sense. The souls of the gods are actual gods that were here a very very long time ago. A number that your human mind cannot comprehend. But it is our task to keep the world stable. But I am different from my family members. I enjoy destroying everything. And in doing so, they came together and sealed me away until <laughs> Sim Sara gave me a way out. But because of the rules that were set a long time ago, they cannot directly interfere with the world and touch me where I am. But if I was able to take over a human body, I will be able to do everything I want. So that is everything I've been working for for all these years. And now because of this boy here, because of him giving up the one thing that he thought that he had left, his love for that girl, he's broken beyond repair. And now he's all mine. As the thing laughs psychotically as its mouth appeared, I'm getting my power back, all of it. Not if I have anything to say about it. Not to create a sword out of his blood. As he shot forward. I might not be able to take my gifts away from you because I'm not yet at my strongest. But you are a result of me. So know your place. Natsu was black and as he crashed through the rubble. As the thing turned near his body as he saw several Kumo ninjas coming towards the area. After enough destruction, Kumo ninjas were sent to investigate. Oh, fun. Meanwhile, Natsu pulled himself out of the rubble as he grabbed his bleeding jaw and snapped it back together. He heard screams. 
As he watches the demon just pounce upon them, he did not speak, he did not ask them any questions. The only thing that he did was drop and he eradicate. As Natsu made his way over as he finished snapping the neck of the last Kunuichi. Hmm, that was fun. This world is full of people. For the taking. Oh, you're back. Well then, the entity said. Let me put you down because you're annoying. As he moved. Not so found himself slammed viciously in the ground. As his head was trampled upon. His face was smushed. As his hand was grabbed and tore out of his socket. Not to blast a hole through Naruto. But Naruto simply smiled. Although his eyes were closed, the demon had made Naruto smile as he was gaining more control. His wound fixed up instantly, blood stitching itself back together. He grabbed Natsu by the chest and yanked out a huge piece of flesh as Natsu winced in pain. Before he slammed the kick in Naruto's face, launching him back, Natsu then jumped as he released several arrows. It was made from his blood that pierced through Naruto. He then brought his hand up as he created a ball of wind. As he started to gather, as he started to get lace with his chakra and his blood. Before he launched it, the devastating winds shredded the area. They decimated everything around. They ripped apart everything. As Naruto body was littered with cuts, his left arm fell off because of the wind slice. But it then pulled back together and glued back on by the blood. Is that all you got? As the nose of the demon appeared, not so tap into all the power that he was given by Simsara. Yes, do it. Try your best, he said. As not to generate all the power into a single beam. He gathered it in his palm as he focused the chakra down as he compressed it. Before he released the cataclysmic explosion went off. As it reduced the air at the cinders. It destroyed the entire place just swallowing everything. It decimated everything as it was all lost. As Natsu dropped to his knees afterwards. As he had used up all the power but the era was completely wiped away. And Nurta definitely got caught up in that. Meanwhile at Kanoha, Snadi looked through a small microscope. As she was able to look towards the blood that Urchamar had put inside of this pill. There was blood, chakra, and a few different materials, but mostly it was Orchimaru's chakra as he was trying to use it as a curse mark, trying to control Naruto. Snedi had all the ingredients to help Naruto, as she just wished this would work. She was already having Shizune work on something that could kill him, that could constrict his blood if this failed. They have not told Sakura yet fear and how she would react as she would flip out so they did not tell her yet, but she had to find a way to make sure that they were able to stop him if the worst come to pass. Meanwhile, at the land of whirlpools, deep, 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 deep down below the earth, lying in a coffin with thousands of seals over it, was none other than Simsara. The mass on his chest started slowly evaporate. In Simsara's mindscape, he looked around. Why am I here? He said, as he was brought back to his mindscape. He looked as he saw, Naruto appeared. Naruto? You're... Oh, I'm not Naruto. Simsara stepped back. No. It can't be already. Well, it's quite simple. The boy gave up. What? Yes. He gave up. I just showed him his life. A thousand times over. Showed him the pain that he would have to go through if he survives. I showed him what he would do to his precious Sakura. His precious Sasuke. I showed him what he would do to his motherly figure that was Sanadi. Jiraiya. I showed him what he would do to the people that he cared about. And I broke him. I broke and fractured his mind. His heart was already fractured and I destroyed his mind. So now he's all mine. He's given up. And now I'm free. No, said Simsara. This can't be happening. Oh, but it is. And this is all your fault. You fool. But then you thought that you could control me. 
just because you place my essence in a mass, but you should know. I only want to cause chaos and I want to see how far I could push you Uzumakis. When you got bored, I decided to break free by killing you guys. But then you tried to seal me. I warned you back then that it would not be the end of me. And now, that is brought forth to reality. Because I will not die. I cannot die. And this world as you know it is doomed. Because of you. I want you to remember that. As you sleep here for eternity. The seals outside will prevent you from ever leaving. And also. Because of the changes I made to your body. You cannot die. So forever in your grief. Suffer knowing that you brought forward. The extinction of humankind. As the thing laughed before it vanished. Sim saw her drop to his knees, his head touching the ground. What have I done, he said. Meanwhile, Natsu was on his knees as he felt the power left him. As he didn't see anything or anyone. That was when blood started to gather from the surrounding area. Damn it, said Natsu. He's not dead. Natsu watched as something formed in front of him. It was Naruto. His back was turned, but he was different. He had two horns in his head. The horns were curved, like a like a crown. They were blood red. His hands were larger, his body exactly was larger. He had a mass on his back. Not so frozen he saw the completed mass. The smiling face of a dead man mass. As Naruto slowly turned with his blood, thirsty look on his face. Oh, hi there Natsu. It's nice to meet you, in full person. You, you're, oh let me answer that for you. I'm him, the dead man Mass. But do you want to know my real name? I should warn you though, once you hear it, it will be the last thing you ever hear. But guys, it being subscribed right here. If you want to see next parts and do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. Remember, share to all of your friends and social media platform. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.